Hi, my name's Danny, and I play Boom Beach sometimes. So, uh, well, Boom Beach has been out now um, on iOS, on uh, Apple, for quite a while. So, I wanted to sort of give, a, just do a video that's dedicated just to Boom Beach, just talk you through the basics. Um, and, uh, well, something's happened today, Dr. Terror has arrived, so we're going to go and practice attacking on him. So, Boom Beach is a game similar to Clash of Clans, but it's not the same. It's available at the moment only on Apple, but it... They, Supercell have said that you know it's, Android is coming, um, but you know right now you can just download it from the uh, Apple Store. Uh, it's free to play, uh, and like Clash of Clans, you can buy buy gems as well. Um, I think I bought one pack of gems, and that's it. I think just to finish something early. But yeah, apart from that, it's just you go out raiding, uh, and your so your troops are built here in the landing craft. You can upgrade the landing craft. And like Clash of Clans, it you know it's like the camps, right? So you get more landing craft as you as you go on up to a maximum of eight. Each landing craft needs to be upgraded. Upgrading gives you extra space for to carry troops when you go and attack. You uh, so the troops that you gain you you use are unlocked as as your town hall level goes up. So this is the town hall just in the corner here. It's a little bit different from Clash of Clans in that there's no farming whatsoever. You can't just take half the buildings with all the resources and then end the game. The only time you get any resources whatsoever is when you hit the, uh, the headquarters. And um, yeah, so once you've taken the headquarters, you win 100%, so it's like one star. You can only ever win one star. You have resources, so you have the, um, you have the iron mine, which uh, gives you uh, some, um, some iron, which is sort of used to upgrade certain buildings. You've got the uh, quarry, which gives you stone, and uh, again, you know, these all upgrade, and there's wood as well, yeah, this one here, so the sawmill. Uh, the other thing, of course, is, is gold, so the houses, the residences give you gold, and, you know, as you, as you upgrade them, you get more gold, so, um, you know, if you to upgrade it, add an extra 25,000, so and so forth. So, uh, so that's basically the resources. Um, there's no base design in the same way that Clash has base design, um, in that you have walls and, uh, and people can attack from different directions. But if you sort of look at some of the big guys, they, you can get an idea. Oops, if you go to the global, you can see some of the, the big guys. You get an idea of how they, how they organise their bases, so it'll give you some ideas. What I tend to do is put... <laughs> uh, what I tend to do is put all of my... Uh, we'll put, we'll put my town hall in the back corner. So it's going to make everyone have to go through all of my defences to get to it. Uh, and the defences you get obviously upgrade as the town hall upgrade. So when you start off you get the basic uh, sniper tower and uh, I believe you get the machine gun. And then you unlock the cannon. Cannon's very good at stopping big targets. Um, you know, its damage per second is pretty strong, 221 at this level. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty effective. As you go up you get the boom cannon. Uh, which, sorry, the next one up is the uh, Mortar, um, which, you know, isn't really as effective as the Mortar in, um, in Clash of Clans, but it's, you know, it's still pretty good. Um, you get the Boom Cannon, which just takes out, you know, pretty much <laughs> any small troop in one shot. Um, you get the Flamethrower. Flamethrower, so I put my Flamethrower right next to the Town Hall, so it's the last, the last thing to uh, defend. And that's, you know, that's interesting because the Flamethrower doesn't just... Um, attack. It also the, the the things that it burns stay burning uh, for a short while afterwards as well. So it's pretty effective. Okay, certainly against small troops. Uh, and then you got the uh, you got the mines. The mines are visible. The boom mine is pretty evil actually. I can take out 1100 uh, at level four, so level 100 uh, damage per second. So you know it's, I've, what I've done is I've tried to put the path that they're going to take lots of mines. So they have to waste their gunboat energy. The gunboat. Okay, the gunboat is uh, it's interesting because this is sort of it's used to soften up the enemy if you like but it's also used for things like help helping you um, direct your troops uh, provide um, cover in terms of health and um, smoke and uh, and um, and flash and they, they do different things on the battlefield um, as you unlock them you'll you'll find out uh, now I'm gonna I need to upgrade my uh, sorry add extra troops so you, you can actually add individual uh, you know, you can change the troops on each landing craft, or you can just do all of it all over again. So I'm just going to do that there. Right, so I'm going to be raiding with, with not as many troops as I could possibly have, but I just want to sort of show you how this works. 
so that's basically it. Now, if you press, uh, so if you press this button here, you get all the you know upgrades that you can possibly do. You can only you only have one builder, so but the builds take a lot less time. So um, you shouldn't have too many problems in upgrading. Uh, yeah. So what else? A sculptor. Sculptor adds these these sculptures. The sculptures can add something to uh, to either your base, to your attacking, to your resources, or to your defending. So I've got a defensive building damage plus twelve percent, power stone chance, which is the crystals, um, uh, gunboat energy, and troop damage and troop health. Now the crystals are things that you gain when you win a, a, a match. You get a different type of crystals. You got the life, ice, magma, and dark according to the color, and each one has a different effect. So. Uh, boost production, improved base defences, power up troops, and various powers. The best ones are the dark ones, I believe. Uh, so basically, it's, you get these fragments and you get these uh, these sort of shards here and so on and so forth. And then you, once you built a crystal, it kind of you can either use the stat. So once you built a statue using seven crystals, you can either keep it or you can um, trade it in for one of the next one up. Uh, that's the way it works, really. Sort of cumulative. Anyway, so if you hit this button here, oops, get our resources. If you hit this button here, you get your map. Your map is expanded by um, unlocking the radar, but you know at the start it's fairly small. And a map contains um, both single player and multiplayer enemies. So this one here, for example, is a single player enemy. Uh, so it's computer base. Uh, the resources from computer bases aren't nearly as good as the resources from from uh, humans. And then you just sort of decide how you want to attack. Uh, and you also have, uh, well, you also have resource bases. Resource bases are computer, uh, but they're they're captured by humans. So someone else could capture your your resource base. And every time you you've captured it, it upgrades the um, it, it upgrades the uh, defenses. Now I've just noticed I've got some uh, some trees on here, so I can actually take these out now. So I can exchange. Gold for, um, for 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 wood, which is to me more valuable because I'm going to be upgrading some stuff. So I'm just going to clear out that. Now, if you win a, I mean, the best thing to do when you win a resource base is to clear out all the trees you can. Uh, you get these little boxes from time to time, which give you diamonds. Uh, just really like the um, the you know clearing the obstacles in in Clash of Clans. Now these these are human bases. So that's Kyle. Oh, so this is a this is a resource base that's been taken by someone else, Doctor Babu. So let's just go into one of their bases, uh, Scout. So clearly this is a human. Uh, you can check all the sort of details about town or headquarter level and all the defences and stuff. And then once you attack, you're going to attack from the beach, as it's called, Boom Beach. And then, well, I'm just going to show you how you're going to attack in a second. Let's do that in a second. Uh, there was one more thing. Yes, so uh, the, uh, where there's an exclamation mark, it means you can find new opponent. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about the, uh, it swaps out that person for another person and that changes every few days. I wanted to talk a little bit about the way that uh, matchmaking happens because it's, it, it takes a little bit of understanding. So, you get new player opponents, they're called Blackguard Mercenaries, um, uh, when you explore more areas on your map. Or they, they come up from time to time, you know, overnight for example, you know, your village has been lost, this village has been lost to this guy here. So, you, the vi villages that you take, can be replaced by human beings over time. You know, every 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 12 hours or something, one or two will be taken. So every time you see a new mercenary base on your map, either due to exploration or invasion, your matchmaking score increases. So your matchmaking score is this this like is this number that you don't see, um, and it's only used really as an aid to find suitable opponents. So the way it works is really cool because the opponents that you'll see, some of them are too strong. Um, you know, this, this guy here, for example, with my troops, I might not be able to take him out. So, but it will gradually, so the, this matchmaking score that you don't see dictates which, what type of opponents you're going to find uh, turning up on your base. And it decreases over time. Every time you see a new mercenary base, your matchmaking score increases. But it will gradually decrease over time if your map is populated by player opponents with a higher experience level than yours. So, see all these. So I'm 33, so I see a 34, see a 33, actually, that's, these are all pretty pretty much the same level, 35 and so on and so forth. Now, every higher level experience, every higher level opponent will contribute to the decrease, 
and the contribution is bigger if the uh, experience level difference is greater. So the longer that the opponent stays on a map, the more it contributes to the decrease. So if you've got a, a map with loads of players that you could never beat because they're much too high than you, they'll start to you know, offer you know, this exclamation mark that you can find a new opponent. And they'll start, you'll start to see them going lower and becoming easier. When they're in that find new opponent state with that exclamation mark, they don't count. So this 37, for example, doesn't count now. So the good thing to do is, if as soon as you see the exclamation mark coming up, and it's, it's, it's too hard for you, just clear it. Go, go to find your opponent, and a 32 will come up. It's not guaranteed that it's going to be somewhere easier, but that matchmaking score decrease means that there's more chance that it will. So it's a good idea to clear that out. The, the computer bases have no effect whatsoever on your, on your matchmaking score. Does that make sense? This matchmaking score, you can't see it. it doesn't, you can't modify it but it's influenced by the level of opponents on your, on your map. Once, every, or once or twice a week you get a terror stage coming up, and that's the Dr. Terror. We're going to use this for practicing attacking. So that's the headquarters that you need to take. There's some defences there. Uh, these are the big defences that I want to take out, which are the rocket launchers. Now, each of these sort of boxes here, uh, they give you extra gunboat power. So you see my gunboat at the moment has 47 power. So it gives me a lot of things I can do with that power. So I'm going to take out these two um, rocket launchers by hitting them in between. Oops, uh, <laughs> not very well hitting them in between. Okay, so that's that taken out. Um, I'm not going to go in this area, so I don't need to worry about that defense there. I'm going to come in via the corner here, because remember I haven't got all my troops. So I've been a bit silly and I didn't make them before the video. Now, these guys are going to move as by themselves, you know, they're attracted to the nearest thing that they can attack. Uh, you want to make sure that the, the uh, in because I'm using heavies and zookas as my troops, you want to make sure that the, uh, the zookas are protected because they're quite weak. The heavies are tanks, so if you think clash, then you're thinking um, barbarians and archers. That's probably the best way to put it. Now, I'm going to watch out, because so the, the first defenses are going to hit are these... Um, these mortars, so I'm going to take out the mortars. I'm going to draw my troops back because they're going in the wrong direction down there. I've got 26, um, 26 power left on my, um, my ship, so I think I should be probably be okay. I just want to show you the, uh, the shock, which is like, a, it's like free spell basically. So if you press that, it shocks everything in the area and it obviously makes it incapable of, of firing. So I'm, I'm just going to focus in on taking out the, the town hall, if you like. <laughs> taking out the HQ. <laughs> it's not called the town hall. But stop thinking clash. Stop thinking clash, daddy. So there you go, that's an attack. And I've got three, shot, uh, three crystals, power crystals, or whatever they're called. No casualties. Now the good thing is you get your troops back. Um, so any that you don't use. Ah, the power of my active volcano, my tower turrets will be strong there. Yeah, right. Um, so you can go straight back in again. You don't need to build your troops again. So let's have a look. What have they got? Those are all surrounding the base there. I think probably a good idea is to go in from this side and then work around. There's that thing there. I, I don't like rocket launchers because it takes out my, my zookas. So let's, let's go and back in and attack the uh, rocket launcher. You got to. The thing with uh, with boom is you got to. If you're a clash player, you have got to take yourself out of that thought that that it's all about the resources and farming and stuff like that because it does, doesn't work that way. It's it's it, it's 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 different. It's not really clash 2.0 if you like. Boom beach is it, the most important thing in boom beach. Of course, is the um, there's a flare. So this this thing here which directs your your troops around. I'm going to use that in a second. So I'm thinking. I'm going to try and take out this area with this, this, this rockets here. I think that should be more or less okay. Right, I'm going to group my troops back up again because I want them to be focused in one area. Um, again, obviously the... Take that out. Quick, quick, quick. Take it out. Ah, oh, too short, too slow. Um, I, I want all of my troops focused on, on attacking the headquarters there. I'm sure if there's any Boom Beach fans that's where any Boom Beach experts should be grimacing at me with this. <laughs> it's like, no, you're doing it wrong, Daddy. 
There we go. That's Doctor Terror. Doctor Terror is an event. It's really nice. It happens for the same. Everyone it happens for everyone at the same time. Did I get through? No casualties. Right. Okay. Good. And got four crystals. So it's like um, when when Doctor Terror arrives, it's like the whole community is going, yeah, excellent. We've got free loop, or easier loop, should I say? This one looks like quite an easy one. There's the rocket launchers there. So let's we're gonna um, take out the rocket launcher with try and soften them up a bit with these. There we go. So the interesting thing is that every time you use one of the gunboat, well, if, if you use like you know the the, the uh, rockets, for example, they get more expensive each time. So uh, where am I going to go now? Uh, I should probably work them in that way and get these these things. But I might go in actually this way because there's less mines that way. So I haven't got that many troops. Yeah, I want them focused in in that direction, I think. So, uh, yeah, so you can't just sort of use flare, 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 because each time you add a flare, each time you use a flare, it goes up by one or two. Okay, I'm going to shock those so they don't do too. The, the, the main thing with this Zuka and, um, and heavy attack is you want to keep your heavies alive for as long as possible, because the Zukas are pretty pretty useless uh, so you can add a health that's not necessary now because nothing's attacking it but you're gonna add a health and it gradually increases the health of the of the heavies the heavy's got a lot of health so it takes a while um, so that's that's that should we see if we can go for one more again I haven't really got all the troops so this is a doc terror stage four right let's see it gets slightly different diff more difficult each time um, so looking at the range, yeah, I want to stay away from this area here. I think if I go in there, take that out, then I take out the cannon. I don't think there's anything else that can attack me. So there we go. So we're going to attack. It's, cool. it's a really important thing to plan beforehand. Um, I might take out that crate as well. Yeah. Remember that you get extra power when the when you take out the. Uh, Ah oh, yes, excellent. Okay, that will do nicely. Thank you. There is some splash damage, so it's sometimes a good idea to take out things on the you know on the corner or between um, the fences when they're too close together. Right, so it should be okay now to go in, flare in this way. So I think this is going to be the last raid I do this in this video because I just wanted to show you the, the mechanics of raiding. Um, I'm going to I'm going to focus it down there because what I want to do is sneak in around this way. I don't want to get any. Ugh. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Come on, go that way. What you don't want to do is press flare three times by mistake. But no, I wanted to sneak in this way really. Um, because I don't want to go anywhere near this area here because that boom cannon is just going to destroy me. There we go. So it's, it's quite strategic in, in you know in planning out how you're going to do attack. It's pretty good. And uh, yeah, well, the thing is, it's a bit different from Clash. You know, it's not a game that you really you really want to be on constantly all the time. But it certainly is a game that you can sort of dip in and dip out of, you know, many times a day. Um, there you go, I've got a big crystal there, that's good. I'm not sure what they're called, but it's pretty good. So now if I go back to, because I'm really after those purple ones. So now if I go back to the, um, the sculptor, I've got, oh, okay, I've got seven of these shots. Brilliant, okay, so if I get this idol here, which is seven of these triangle things, I'm going to get, I'll reclaim it. Through, I'll have three of the diamonds then, but you know. So it increases. I want to get up to. I want to get up to seven, so I can get the bit of the masterpiece. In uh, anyway, well, I hope that makes sense. So it's a, it's a good game. It's lots of fun. It's different from Clash, though. And you, you know, there's a nice community on the forums. You might want to check out. I'll put a link in the comments to the Boom Beach forum. Anyway, I hope that was useful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Take care. Bye for now.